So um, it's almost impossible to uh, follow uh, the incredible and, and um, people that have spoken before me. So um, I, I'll keep it short. I want to talk about two things, uh, one quantitative, one uh, slightly less so, in terms of what um, my lab and my research group and many of my students are here are doing. Uh, one of the things that we've been studying for quite some time is this issue of quality. What I mean by that is, how do we know that the medicines that people are getting are of desired quality? Right? How do we know that they will do what they're supposed to do? And imagine a situation where you are dealing with people who do not have much of a political agency, have limited resources, are suffering from xenophobia and other challenges. What do they choose? They probably go to places where there is medicines available in informal markets that may or may not be very good. So from the quantitative side, this is a picture that I took of a shop that was uh, illegal in um, a refugee camp in northern Uganda. Um, and there was no electricity, there was no catalog, there was no air conditioning, um, and medicines were available. And the shop was doing a brisk business because it was still better than the UN place where people would go. So what do uh, these medicines do? What happens when people consume these essential life-saving medicines for a long period of time? What exactly happens? So one of the questions we're very interested in asking is the biological aspect of this. Do these medicines lead to antimicrobial resistance? And if they do, what is the mechanism of that? Are there specific genes that are upregulated? Are there specific pathways that we did not know before that are now there? to build evidence for the argument that these medicines are not just ethically wrong, they're also leading to these challenges that affect every one of us through antimicrobial resistance. So that's one dimension of this problem. The second dimension is doing something about this issue and detecting poor quality medicines before they reach the consumers. Right? So the idea here is, can we detect these medicines that are substandard, subtherapeutic, counterfeit, falsified, and can we put technologies that we develop at all points in the supply chain so the people who are most vulnerable are protected to some extent? That's one side of the issue. The second dimension of the same problem is looking at refugee, um, internally displaced people who are forced out of this, their homes, in this case, in one of the worst humanitarian crises of modern times, and that happens to be in Yemen. So if people are not familiar with the challenge in Yemen, the uh, Saudi Arabian and, and United Arab Emirates bombing campaign, largely funded through uh, those countries and supported by the United States, UK, and other countries, has really sort of completely destroyed the infrastructure in the country. The worst cholera outbreak in human history sort of occurred there not once, but multiple times. About 80% of the community is now extremely food insecure. The impact on children is particularly severe. And people cannot leave international borders because there isn't one. At the bottom and the south is Saudi Arabia, and on the other side, you have the sea. So we do not have information on the impact on those communities. So one of the questions we are trying to ask, and this relates to what Yanis was talking about, is to developing these models that allow small contributions, NGOs, UN groups, that can do a better job in being prepared in small pockets to know when to stock for certain medicines, to know what is the likelihood that you will run out of these essential medicines that are going to make a difference between life and death of somebody. One of the challenges that Yemen has faced is not just Saudi Arabian bombing, but sort of long-term climate challenges associated with water shortage and sort of being a water stress environment. And we're going to see this increasingly all over the world where climate change and force displacement, climate change and conflict are going to really reinforce each other. So one of the projects that we are doing in this area is focused on trying to understand how do you improve healthcare coverage in the country and get the necessary resources. Our focus in this case happens to be um, children and diarrheal diseases, but it can certainly be expanded to other places as well. That's a quantitative part of the research. But in underlying all of this work is a sense that how do people know where to go? How do people know what medicines to get? what pharmacy to go to, what hospital to go to, and underlying all of that information is something that is called trust. People make decisions based on their social network, on their trust. 
Some of our work has shown that Syrian refugees in Lebanon would go back to Damascus to pick up medicines because they didn't trust the pharmacy that is next door. What does that mean? How do people make that decision? Why do people make that decision? And underlying all of this work about quality of medicines and sort of quality of care is this notion of trust, and we want to explore that. Most of our work in this area has been not in, in uh, sort of uh, northwest Pakistan, where this is a picture, where this is an issue, but also in Shatila camps in Palestine, where there are Palestinians who would sort of get help and get health care from pharmacies in the neighborhood, and Syrians who live next door in the same camp and would go all the way back to Damascus in the same camp. How do you make that decision? Why do you make that decision? And what can we do as researchers, as academics, to not only understand that, but improve the trust in the system so that you can really get better care despite all of the challenges that exist. So this was the last talk um, of uh, this afternoon. I really want to thank everyone who came. We have people from all over campus, and I, I can not thank you enough. And thank you so much, Gloria, for organizing this and sort of helping us do this. Thank you so much. And Brian. And Brian, that's right.